Hello, thank you for tuning into my channel. I finally had the courage to open up this bag and work on my great grandmother's quilt. So if you wanna see the results of my first time stitching on this, please stay tuned. I have decided to go ahead and get started on my great grandmother's quilt top. I brought my handwork with me so that I could get rolling on it. And I wanted to do a little bit of filming while I'm here. So this is my great grandma's quilt. Um, these are her string blocks that she put together. And this is all in one corner of the quilt and there are several different sections and different types of blocks in this quilt but I'm gonna start right here with the strings one because there aren't that many repairs and I think that I can do them now that I have a little bit of confidence um, about the process so when it comes to each section I'm gonna take each of these blocks and just kind of go little bit by little bit and see what needs to be adjusted, repaired, whatever. So as we go block by block, um, let's see, I'm just kind of pulling to see what is coming apart. Nothing right there. Okay, and this little section, this little bit right here is open. You can see that. And I think the seam allowance is super small there. And then let's see, as we go down, I don't see anything that concerns me here. Uh, this is an interesting block because it looks like it's a really big piece, but it's actually two pieces stitched together. Um, here is another piece right here that needs to be uh, have some attention paid to it. Um, this part right here I think is interesting. I'm not going to do anything with it. But when she had a lot of bulk in her seams, let me see if I can show you. Like right in here, she would go back and put more stitches in it. And you can see there's her knot right there, but she went back and did like a cross hatch of stitching. And you can see that on the top. Um, let's see, keep going. And then here is, I don't even know what that is. It's just some string that's hanging out. I may cut it, I may not, I don't know yet. Um, and then what else? Okay, here is a little piece that is that needs some attention. This part, it's kind of open, and so I'm gonna go back and see what I can do for that. And then, let's see. Here are some more of those cross stitches to uh, tap, tamp down the seam allowance. And then this part is coming apart a little bit. Not sure what's going on right here. And then the same over here. So that may need a little bit of extra work. Uh, these are the cross seams again. And uh, yeah, that's what we got so far. So um, I guess let's talk a little bit about this thread. Um, as I said before, well, I don't know if I said it in this video, but this uh, quilt top is completely hand pieced. So all the stitches were made by my great grandmother's hand, which is amazing. Um, and I asked my mom about this thread because I wasn't sure. And my mom said that my great grandmother stitched with what they called number eight thread. And I think that the size eight, it's a pretty thick thread. You can see it right here. That's a pretty thick, thick thread. It's not like what I'm going to use to add my repairs. Um, and when I asked if she was sure, she said, is it a white thread? And I said, yes. And so here you can see that she used this really thick thread. And it's just a, um, it looks like it's just a single strand. Um, but yeah, so it's that number eight. And the whole thing is pieced with this really thick thread. Um, oh, this, this is a block that is pieced together. But we're not working on that right now. Um, so I am not going to use that. I'm going to just pull my uh, 50 weight thread and get started on it. So 
I guess I'll just bring you along the journey. I'm not really sure what's about to happen, but let's let's see. Let's figure this thing out together. So um, I think I'm going to start right here. This piece is, let's see, if I go to the back, there's a little hole on the front. You can't really see it on the back, but it's right there, right here. You can see that it's just not quite secure there. So I'm just going to start there and see what I can do with it. So let me um, come, I'll thread my needle and then I'll come right back. I'm sort of filming upside down right now. Um, this is my first time doing hand stitching, at least on camera, other than binding. So I went and got, this is a needle. Um, I don't even know a lot about it. Um, I just know that this is the one that I've been working on with my binding and I really like it. I did buy some um, size, I think I bought size seven sharps, but I didn't bring them just because I have this one that I kind of like working with right now. Um, I am left-handed, so I don't know if you'll be able to see which way I'm stitching. Um, this is my first time making a reasonable quilter's knot, so I'm excited about that. Um, well, not first time, but as I was doing my other project, I kind of got it down. Um, so this is my 50 weight thread. I'm just using, this is the Coates and Clark something, something. This was in my machine. And when I watched some videos, they said the 50 weight's fine. So I'm going to try that. Um, and my first stitch or my first seam is right in here, right here. So let me show it to you on the front again. So right here, it's just this little bitty part that's sticking out. And I can't tell if it's seam allowance uh, or like a really thick group of seams, like, like you can see right there, or if it's just that this is a, um, a really thick piece of fabric. I mean, these are like clothing, probably most of them. So I don't know if it's like a, um, like a seam allowance that was on the clothing. So I, what I did was I went ahead and looked at the back and like you can see the knot, this is my great grandmother's knot. See how huge it is with this number eight thread. So I know I'm gonna pull that to the back. And then, um, so it, the hole is like right in here. But what really interested me was this seam allowance because it's so big on this side and so small on this side. So I, I'm just ha having to be super careful about it, but I wanna make sure that I can match it as close as possible and I mean, my main goal is just to get that little piece in there that was sticking out. So I don't know if I'll get it this way. I'm just gonna have to wait and see. Um, it looks like I might get it, we'll see. So I'm just going to do a super short stitch, probably, okay, there it is right there. So like maybe, I don't even know, like maybe just a couple centimeters just to see if I can catch it in there and I'm gonna try to make my stitches small enough so that um, so that everything can hold together. So I'm gonna start with the back here. I'm just trying to make sure that my, I don't even know where the, the seam, where it would be, because there's another set of seams right here too. So let me see, let me, let me pull all of this around so I can see exactly where that seam allowance is going to fall. Okay, so I can see it, right? Okay, so there it is. I'm gonna put a pin in just right here. I don't even know if this is gonna matter, but I'm just gonna pop it right there to make sure that I cross right in there. And so then I guess I'll stop, but look at how, how big that seam allowance is on this side compared to this side. Um, I'm not going to freak out about it. I'm just noticing it. And I think what it is is she was putting it that she was just putting a lot of um, a lot of different size blocks together. So she had to do what she had to do to make it fit. Um, so I'm going to go and I'm going to stop the seam wherever this pin ends up. So right there. So I'm not sure. So I'm going to try to start it over here somewhere. And then, um, and then we'll see where how it comes out. 
All right, so there's the first part. I'm gonna do a little back stitch here. Okay, I'm gonna try to make sure I catch both pieces. And I'm not even sure how well you can see this on the camera, but I'll try to show both sides of stitches. And then, let's see. And then we'll do a little running stitch here. Let's see. And I have my elbows on the table here to hopefully try to make it work. Uh-oh. Let's just do one stitch. Okay. And then I'll do one at a time, I guess, until I can make it through the whole thing. Because I just don't want them to be too big on one side and too small on the other side. But I really have no idea what to expect. Just trying it today, just to see what we can do. Okay. And that one's kind of bulky right there. I can feel that. So I'm using my thimble to push it through. Okay. And I think once I really get rolling on this, that it's really not as hard as I think and I'm, I'm intimidating myself about it. Uh-oh needle popped out and again this is just a lot of bulk that we're stitching through so I'm pushing with my thimble to get it through there and I'm not even oh oh I got my thumb <laughs> I'm not really too sure why I'm showing this on camera I guess just to get it over with and to be accountable to show that I'm actually working on this quilt and getting it started so here we go and so I'm just gonna go through to where that last pin is. And I'm, I'm basically trying to stay along the stitch line that great grandma did. And um, my mom called her or calls her Grandma Maddie. Um, so maybe I will start calling her Grandma Maddie. And this is Grandma Maddie's quilt, so. Um, but like I said in previous videos, she died in the 1960s and i think that it would be really interesting to show a picture of my great grandmother and then a picture of my mom because they look exactly the same it's really it's quite uncanny how alike they look i'll ask mama if i can post a picture to see it to to show you guys but we'll see all right so we're going to take one more stitch Wait, where am I? Okay, so we're gonna take one more stitch here. Okay. And then I'm going to push this through the back and knot it. And I got this tip from um, a YouTube video. I don't remember who it was, but what she did was she Took it to the back side and then gave it a nice tight knot. Okay. okay. And then, let me see. Hold on. But I mean, but that was for, I think that was for, she was actually quilting. She wasn't stitching, like piecing, kind of like I'm doing. But we're just going to see what happens. Here and there we go and get it nice and tight as tight as we can get it and then I'm gonna bring it back through and do a back stitch and that should catch it so okay and then uh oh some random pieces from that okay let's do this okay and one more, or right, let's do two back stitches just to be on the safe side. I don't know what that fabric is, but it is thick. Okay. And then one more. And I'm kind of getting offline with the stitching, but I'm not going to stress about that. 
Okay. There we go. And now we're going to give it a little snip. And I'm going to take a look at it. So let's take these pins out. Um, and probably you won't be able to see very many of my stitches. Yep, I don't see them hardly at all. I'm going to clip this little part under the knot. Okay. Cool. And then, so that's the back side. Okay, and then the other side. And so let's see, my stitches start right here. And so now we're going to flip it out and see how it looks. A little nervous. I would say drum roll, please. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let me hold it. So it's this little piece right here. So right there. Okay, so it's all, it's all in there. I'm not sure what to do about this knot, if I should keep it in there as an ode to the character of the quilt or if I should go ahead and cut it out knowing that I've already taken care of that. Let me know in the comments what you think we should do about this knot. Um, right now, I'm going to probably set a timer for about 25 minutes. Oh, look at that. That actually looks really nice, huh? Yeah, it does. Okay, I'm not gonna mess with it too much because <laughs> I'm afraid it may, need, it may need to go in a little bit tighter but it's all in there. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna stay on the string piece, and even though I'm really concerned about this piece right here, cause it was right next to what I was stitching, and so I was really concerned that it might come out a little bit more, so I may go ahead and do this. Um, either way, I'm gonna set a timer for 25 minutes, and then when I'm done, I will show you everything that I accomplished. It's been about 25 minutes. And so now I get to show you the repairs that I did. I did end up going back to this side. I'm calling these butterfly blocks. And I did this stitch right here. And so if we look at the back and it's, it's a little tight, but okay. But here is the stitching that I put on it. I'm kind of concerned about the fray right there, but I think I'm going to um, eventually stabilize the whole thing and so it won't be so bad. But you can see my little tiny stitches above my great-grandmother's stitches. Um, and again, this is what it looks like on the top. Pretty cool. And I ended up going to this next block over. So I did this seam right here. And I will put a, um, a picture of what it looked like before. I think I started up here and I went through maybe down here. Let's see if we look at the back. Maybe we can see what I did. Um, so, yeah. And I ended up having to go back over this part because I didn't catch it all. And I think I got it well enough. Um, and so there's a, I have a pin right here because this is my next part that I'm going to go over. And that those two stitches took 25 minutes, which is fine. I'm not in a super rush to get this done, but um, I just want to be consistent with it. So very excited. So far today, I did this stitch and this stitch and this stitch. So I may come back to this in another five minutes or so and get back to work. I am so excited that I took some time on this. This video is just for accountability, really, so that I can um, hold myself accountable to working on this. Um, it's been a great process, even though it's just been the first time. So I'm excited to continue it maybe uh, once or twice a week just to see what we can get done on it. I still have some work left to do on these string blocks, so I will finish any repair work that I have to do on this before I go to the next section. So um, any tips, any tricks that you have or suggestions to help this process go a little more smoothly would be appreciated. I would love to see um, your experience in working um, either in quilt repair or just hand piecing. Um, if you have any questions about what you've seen in this video, leave them in the comments below. 
thumbs up this video, share it with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Thank you.